Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are all in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines for COVID-19, maintaining a social distance of two meters and using hand sanitizers. At the time of Holy Communion, there will be further instructions. At the end of the Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Hunt, and our gathering hymn is number 568 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Praise to the Lord, number 568. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. In our first reading today, we hear the prophet Isaiah speaking on the part of the Lord, saying, My house will be a house of prayer for all the nations. We come together as God's people to give him praise and to pray for all of the needs of the human family, that we may worthily enter into this celebration and give God the praise that is his due, let us pause for a moment to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is at number 105 in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 105.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, now I am speaking to you, Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own flesh and blood jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings today seem to me to have the theme of the universality of the call of God, that God wants us all in his family, uh, that he's merciful to all. Uh, The challenge often is for us to be open to that mercy, uh, to be willing to accept it. In the first reading, prophet Isaiah speaks about the Lord's house being a house of prayer for all nations, uh, that uh, foreigners will join with the people of Israel in giving God praise. In the second reading, Paul speaks about how he is an apostle to the Gentiles and he hopes that his own people, through seeing the Gentiles uh, receive the faith, uh, may be challenged and invited uh, to also accept uh, the faith, to believe in Jesus Christ. And in the Gospel we see a Canaanite woman, a woman of a different religion, coming and begging Jesus for the healing of her daughter. And because of her great faith, her daughter is healed. So we see that theme 
running through the readings. The thing that strikes me with that invitation uh, or that um, the universality of God's call to, uh, to us is that for those of us who feel that we are on the outside and we're being invited in, this is joyful news. This is great news. And it makes me think of a passage from the first letter of Peter where Peter, apparently writing to the church in Antioch, says to the people there, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people at all, and now you are the people of God. Once you were outside the mercy, and now you have been given mercy. Reading a commentator on this particular passage once, uh, the commentator said that the people of the church in Antioch, by and large, were slaves. They were people who had, uh, their nations had been conquered by the Romans, and they'd been sold into slavery. They were chattel. And through their faith, they're being told by Peter, now you're God's people. This must have been incredible good news for them. This is something that took them from being base and being below others to being God's people. This truly was good news for them. Conversely, the Jewish people at the time that Isaiah is writing had just come back from exile to their country and now the prophet's telling them that these people that have taken over their homes are going to be one with them. I think they would be resentful of that news. And I think Paul, in writing in our, first, in our second reading today to the Romans, I think the Jews of his time, his people, many of them were resentful that, that these uh, apostles who were Jewish people were going out and proclaiming their faith to other people. The Lord invites us all, but are we all open? That seems to be a question that comes to me from today's readings. And it makes me think of a, a movie that came out in 2009 called The Blind Side. Uh, it was, it's based on the true life story of a guy named Michael Orr. Uh, Michael was a homeless and traumatized boy who was taken in by a family. Uh, he had great uh, athletic gifts and he became an all-American football player and a first round NFL draft choice. It's a nice movie. It was made by uh, Disney. Uh, but it, 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 it's, a messy, it's, a, it's a movie that speaks to that, uh, the call to belong. Uh, in this movie, we've got this young uh, black man who uh, is um, uh, homeless, and he's attending this private school uh, because of his athletic ability. And this rich white woman... Uh, sees him, sees him, a classmate of her daughter, and invites him to their home. And uh, she was just inviting him for the Thanksgiving weekend, but then it goes beyond that. Uh, she comes to see that he's, that he's homeless, uh, that he has no one, and in, in her generosity, in her Christianity, she welcomes him in, and, and bit by bit he becomes a part of the family. And what the movie portrays is not only the goodness of this woman, Leanne Tui, and her family in taking him in, but the rewards that they receive through their openness uh, to this young homeless man. That through in, in inviting him in, through coming to know him and making him a part of their family, they are greatly enriched. And I think that's the message that Jesus tried to get across in his ministry on earth that comes to us through the scriptures and that comes to us in this universal invitation to the house of the Lord, uh, to be of God's family. For those who feel they are homeless, for those who feel alienated, it's great good news. But for those of us who maybe feel that we are the elite, uh, that we are part of that house, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for us 
to exercise the hospitality and the generosity that God shows to us. For us to truly prove ourselves God's children by doing for others what he has done for us. In the Mass, we celebrate what Jesus has done for each of us, how he has been merciful to us and has won our salvation through what he was willing to suffer and sacrifice for our sake. In celebrating that, we give God thanks, but we also are challenged that if we are truly to be worthy of this gift, then we in turn must be merciful and must exercise that same hospitality and generosity that God has given to us. As we continue in our Mass, we thank the Lord for his goodness. We thank him for calling us, inviting us to be here in his house of prayer and to be his family. And we ask the Lord to help us to always seek to exercise that same hospitality and generosity in our dealings with others. God bless you. I invite you to please stand and join me in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, we offer to him now our prayers and petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Archbishop Peter, and all followers of Christ, that the spirit of wisdom may guide our discernment in recognizing the voice, face, and heart of Christ present and appealing to us in the poor and the rejected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all peoples of the world strive to be co-creators of a more just and tolerant society. That we may heal all forms of racial discrimination and all actions of hatred that violate human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all wealthy countries may open their arms and welcome to the refugees and victims who are fleeing wars and persecution. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we share our resources with all the suffering people of the world, especially the people of Lebanon. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater reverence and care for the gift of our earthly home, that we may recognize God as creator of all life and show respect and care for our land, air, and waters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessing and strength for the sick, those who are facing terminal illnesses, and for all health care professionals who provide compassionate care for the sick each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, and we pray especially for John and Mary Channing and Thomas and Anastasia Martin and deceased members of the Channing and Martin families, and for all our departed, and for comfort for loved ones who mourn their passing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions.
Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you today, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn is number 495 in the Catholic Book of Worship. We Walk by Faith, number 495. We walk by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands with praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, for the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become 
the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you have bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now that we are at alert level two, we are able to have public worship and the reception of Holy Communion at Mass. However, we must take special precautions to ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe, prudent, as well as a respectful way. Please stay in your seat until the usher guides you. The instructions of the ushers and social distancing of two meters must be observed by everyone wishing to come forward for Holy Communion. The person distributing Holy Communion will wear a face mask and will sanitize his or her hands before distributing Holy Communion. Instead of the individual attestation, Amen, by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before distribution begins. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, they will sanitize their hands, bow towards the host, in silence receive the host in their hands, move to the side to consume the host, and then return to their pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand can receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen.
communion hymn is number 605 in the Catholic Book of Worship, I Am the Living Bread, number 605.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings, and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 447 in the Catholic Book of Worship, A Living Faith, number 447. <laughs> 